Susan St. James is an Emmy Award winning actress, happens to be one of my favorite people in the world, and lucky for me, she's also my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So what else do you do when you're home for Thanksgiving? Interview her on the pink couch. Exactly. <laughs> in the pink room. In the pink room. <laughs> we have to get a good shot. Can we get a good shot of this pink room? Because my mother-in-law so told cool. me one time, she said, always paint your bedroom pink. Why? Because it's so flattering. So you were obviously very successful at what you did. Is there a certain mindset that you had when you were younger that you think contributed to your success? You know, it's like I never had another idea of what I was going to do. But I was patient. You know, I thought, well, I'll take this course in, uh, in the summer that's a theater thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and I never told anybody. But I secretly was making up good movie star names. And it was always being a movie star. But there was never a time like, if I don't make it in six months, you know, or if I don't make it in a year, or when do you say to yourself, mm -hmm. I never got a different job. You know, I did a little modeling just to make money. I never stayed quite that thin, but I, mm -hmm. I did a little modeling. And I just kept pushing forward. And every little thing was a nibble towards what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. It sounds like it was inevitable to you, right? So it was just the little steps along the way to get closer and closer and closer, but the end goal was already there. Right. I mean, I had stood online in Rockford, Illinois to see... Uh, uh, was it called Pillow Talk with Rock Hudson and Doris mm -hmm. Day? I mean, I, and there I was in bed with Rock Hudson. I thought, well, of course, <laughs> this is what I expected. This is yeah, what I was so it just of. seemed normal to yes. you. Yes, and but it wasn't like it is today. I wouldn't actually wish for what it is today for these celebrities, because you know, my private life when I was doing all this fabulous, glamorous stuff was really. I would go hiking and live in a trailer and camping. You kind of were the original fancy hippie. I was exactly <laughs> a very fancy. I'd go. I, I remember when I was. Uh, I'd asked. They asked me to host the Emmy Awards with not me alone, but the ten great women of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So it was Sally Field, Mary Tyler Moore, Lucille Ball. I wow. mean, Cher. It was really the you know mm -hmm. women that were all on television. And I was living up in Oregon in my trailer with my kids and my husband, and I, uh, I asked the girls next door in, in a commune called Rainbow Mist if they would make my dress. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they said, oh, sure. And, and I'd go over for fittings. It was 100% cotton and satin, and, and it was this beautiful dress. I still have it. It would probably fit you. It's I'll try so it tiny when you see it. Had no back. It was pretty sexy. Cut very close here. Mm -hmm. And then had flying herons and rainbows and plants wow. around the bottom. It was beautiful. So when I got to the Emmys, nobody would come near me. Nobody was standing near me. I finally said to Mary Tyler Moore, who, who had been under contract, I knew her. I said, what's the problem? She said, you smell like a bad ashtray. Oh, no. And I was like, why would that be? And it was because they had sewn the whole thing by a wood stove. <laughs> and it was just... I was just Reek, so but nobody I didn't even notice it. To you for nobody, the rest of the I was night? like the pig bend and peanuts, you know. I mean, oh my was, like they would have drawn me with little fumes. Yeah, you know? it was like, <laughs> but it looked really good. Well, that's what's important. Yeah, as it, long as was, the photos were, you good, know, that's and what nobody happens. was acting like they no. wouldn't get in there. Now, this whole industry is obsessed with beauty and aging well, and really all of us are, right, for the most part. You've done it so well. What, I mean, she's not wearing a stitch of makeup right now and still stunning, still beautiful. What are some of your secrets that you're willing to share? Well, you know, I can remember when I was younger and I'd meet women that were a little older, like I was in my 20s, and they'd wear makeup and they'd say to me, you'll wear makeup one day every mm -hmm. day. And I used to think, oh, I don't know. I mean, I was So when you were younger, you just didn't wear it very much? <clears throat> I didn't wear makeup when I didn't work. Mm -hmm. And my friend Jamie Lee Curtis put it the best I've ever heard. Because when I got my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I invited some of the people that I really was actually close, because I haven't lived in California for a long time, so that were really friends. Maria Shriver and uh, Jamie Lee came, because we were all big Special Olympics volunteers mm -hmm. together years ago. And I said, oh my God, you came. I didn't know you were coming. She said, well, I had my war paint on, so I thought, let's <laughs> use it. Might as well. Yeah. And you've never gone crazy with the Botox or any of that? No, I tried it. I especially natural. liked it in my uh, forehead because I thought it was cool. Or, But I tried it around my mouth because I have inherited these sort of lines over my mouth. But I just couldn't recognize my face when mm -hmm. I smiled and stuff. It wasn't when I was still. I think a lot of people that get Botox and stuff, or fillers, I should say, mm -hmm. they look in the mirror and their face is still. 
And so it looks pretty good when your face is still. Everything's filled out. But the minute you animate a little bit, it starts going and it doesn't you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see these poor girls smile and it's mm -hmm. so strange. It's a bit obvious. But I don't hold it against anybody because I think if you're my, I'll, I'll be 70 next summer. So I don't hold it against someone my age who still wants to look fabulous and they're willing to do all those things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, some of them are really well done. Mm -hmm. The ones that get it really well done, they do extend their careers by a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to see them look really pretty. Other ones, we, we make fun of when we see them. You know, you go, what have they done to their face, you know? But I think it can't be done well. I think Jane Fonda looks fabulous. Amazing. Unbelievable. Yes. I think she, she, whoever, and she talks about getting work done and stuff, whoever does that stuff for her, really understands her face yeah. and she looks just great and i love when people can be open about it too that oh i think you should if you do it you should definitely just, be open yeah. about it because otherwise people are you know like oh yeah you don't do anything mm -hmm. you know? but i'm really very good friends through um living together in telluride together at, at the holidays and stuff with bobby brown mm -hmm. and bobby is like i'll say to her well i think i'm gonna get she goes frac soling is okay which is heavy duty laser mm -hmm which sort of takes brown spots away, and I've done that a couple times. <laughs> it's kind of an ordeal, though. But fraxeling, she'll say, da 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 you know, anything you want to do. But she said, we're losing our, you know, our ability to look at a natural face, and so mm -hmm. she thinks it's great. It's tricky, though. Sometimes you look in the mirror and go, I wish I didn't have this or that. You know, you, it really, it's a debate. I've sort of given up the debate now because 70 is kind of the cutoff. I'm not going to really yeah. start again Embrace now. Embrace it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Now, you're one of the most loving and accepting people I know. Just just from knowing you for, what, like six or seven years now, it's just something that I've always noticed and I've always admired about you. And I just wonder if there's a certain mindset or something that you have every day where well, you know, maybe, it allows you to... Like growing up, I think my way. mom would say, if you wouldn't say it to a person's face, you shouldn't mm -hmm. say it when they're not there. That was kind of her thing. Because my mom was the same way. She would shudder if somebody would say, oh, that person should eat a salad. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, or... And I think partly it's that. Partly it's like I'll tell my husband of 34 years that if he's walking slowly across the street in New York and cars are like <laughs> waiting for him to finish crossing the street and they're like upset, he'll go, I, I don't even hear that. But if he's driving and turning left and somebody's just starting across the street, <laughs> and, I, and I always see it from both sides. Well, you call it positivity, and I think that's a perfect name for how I feel about it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, let's try to find the brighter side of that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Oh, gosh, you're welcome. And thanks for making an amazing Thanksgiving dinner oh. yesterday. <laughs> it was wonderful. Oh, I made um, lots of notes about it. <laughs> it's such a rush to the end. It is, yeah. It's you a know, lot to do at once. That's the thing. Everything's going along, and all of a sudden, it's like everything has to go in with 35 minutes to go. Yes, and well, you did it very well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs>